How you guys doing? My name is Tremaine McTiller, aka Mr. M5. Hey, look, guys, follow me on Instagram at Mr. M F I V E. Right. Also, follow my Facebook fan page at M the number five I V E E. Right. And also follow my family page. Right. M5 the Family Hustle on Facebook as well as YouTube. Hey, guys. Anyway, right. Enough of that. I want to talk to you guys about what it means to be properly protected. I was sitting with a client the other day that uh, was actually quite excited because they felt like this family felt like they had the right amount of coverage until I took a look at their policies and discovered that unfortunately they did. Okay. Now this family didn't know that. And thank God I was able to sit down with them ahead of time. But what I've decided to do is a quick video just to kind of break down to you guys right now, what it means to be properly protected. Okay. So I'm going to get right into this. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to do a little, uh, PowerPoint with you guys, man. Look, so again, this is M5, motivated, financially independent, victorious entrepreneur, right? But that's not what we're here to talk about right now. We want to talk about what it means to be properly protected. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start with is the theory of decreasing responsibility. It is imperative that you guys understand exactly what this means. So I'm going to break it down right quick, right? Basically, what the theory of decreasing responsibility states, guys, is that in the early years, okay, and by early, what I mean is young family, young kids, etc., you may need a lot of coverage. By coverage, what we mean is life insurance. The reason you may need more life insurance when you're young, right, is because you may not have a lot of money. You are in the accumulation phase, right? You're saving money. You're accumulating wealth not that you have it yet, okay? Basically what it states is that at this stage in life, the loss of income will be devastating, okay? It will be absolutely devastating, devastating because we don't have a lot of money. But likewise, as we get older, okay? And I want you guys to kind of just keep this in mind, your life insurance needs change over time, okay? They don't remain the same because our lives don't remain the same, right? So in the later years, basically what it states here is that at retirement, you may not need so much coverage, right? But what you better have is money. Absolutely, because when you retire, you're on what's called a fixed income. Somebody say that with me one time, fixed income, okay? That income could remain the same for 20, 30 years, all right? But the reason why you may not need a lot of coverage at this stage in life is because guess what? Your children are grown, right? Your debt is lowered. Your mortgage, right, by this phase should be paid for, okay? So because your um, responsibilities aren't as great, right, the need for life insurance shouldn't be as great. Here's the other thing too, if you've been saving and preparing properly, right, you should have accumulated that wealth that we were talking about in the earlier years that you didn't have, okay? so. Two of the main things that my team and I focus on is helping people in the event that they die too soon, right? Well, we want to make sure that you're properly protected before that occurs, right? And we want to make sure that any event that you live a long, vibrant life, that you don't run out of money, okay? Those are two of the main things that we focus on, right? So look, let me transition to this little concept here that I call how life works, okay? Look, I have John here. And I also have Mary, right, and their beautiful child there in the middle. Each of them are making $3,500 a month, right, for a total of $7,000. Now, unfortunately, but the reality is, is that most of us, most people are living paycheck to what, guys? You guessed it right. We're living paycheck to paycheck. So even though they're bringing this income in, come the first of the month, right, you have bills, mortgage, and or rent, car notes. Most households have two. You have insurance, you have light bill, water bill, gas bill, cable bill, phone bill, child care, food, credit cards, etc. I mean, honestly, the list goes, you know, on and on and on. If you've been adulting for some years, you understand exactly what I mean. So imagine one evening, John is headed home from work and he passes away in a fatal car accident, right? I mean, with everything that's going on right now, man, I mean, imagine you know, John being diagnosed with, you know, COVID, right? Look, he passes away. His wife is emotionally devastated, but she's also financially devastated because guess what, guys? She just lost half of her income. What Mary did not lose, though, 
right, was half of the responsibilities, right? Even though she's only down to $3,500 a month, Mary still has $7,000 a month in bills, right? She may struggle to bury her husband, right? Maybe she has to do a GoFundMe, fish fries, cookouts, whatever. Two weeks later, the first of the month rolls around again, and what's due? Life hits Mary, okay? All of those bills are due. Here's my question for you guys. If this scenario was to happen to your family, could your family survive financially without your income? If the answer is no, we need to talk. If you think so, we need to talk, right? If you're not sure, we absolutely need to talk, okay? I want to make sure, again, that you're properly protected in the event that this may happen to you. All right, so let's take a look at some examples. When it comes to life insurance, right, there's basically two types out there, okay? You have your cash value policies, right? These can be your whole life, universal life, variable life, et cetera. And then you have your term policies, right? So I kind of want to discuss this just a little bit because, you know, there's a lot of, you know, differences of opinion out there. And I'm not going to tell you right now that your opinion is right or wrong. But I just want to kind of talk about the two as I see it, okay? So on this side where you have the cash value life, whole, universal, variable, et cetera, right? You have John and Mary here, okay? At the age of 35, they're each covered for $100,000, okay? For that coverage, they're paying $225 a month, all right? Now, at the age 65, they should have accumulated $76,000 in cash. Is that a good thing or a bad thing, all right? Now, let's take a look at the term side. For that same $225 that John and Mary are spending for $100,000, we're able to get each of them $250,000, okay? $250,000 for 80 bucks a month, okay? We're saving them now $145. Now, because we also work with a wide array of investment companies, we're able to take that difference and invest it for John and Mary. As you guys see here, 145 at 9% at the age 65 will put John and Mary with $265,000 in their account, okay? Here's my question, guys. Would you rather have $100,000 a piece at 225 with only $76,000, right, in cash at 65? Or would you rather be covered for a lot more, right, I mean more than double, right, while on target to have 200 almost three hundred thousand dollars at age 65 okay look i get it it's kind of you know a no-brainer in my opinion as well all right but again everybody's situation is a little bit different right i love to sit down with you and discuss right maybe you know some alternative options or maybe we just may add some value on top of what it is that you have okay but here's the question which program do you want so when it comes to being properly protected all right, I want to kind of just break down exactly what that looks like, because again, a lot of people don't understand. So I'm going to use a little concept that I call DIME, okay? D-I-M-E. The D is for debt, such as credit cards, student loans, auto loans, et cetera, okay? Whatever debt you guys have, as a matter of fact, right, get with your spouse or, you know, yourself and just calculate what that looks like for you. The I is income. All right, so I want you guys to understand that insurance, life insurance, is meant to replace our income, okay? So for that, we recommend 10 to 12 times your yearly income. If I'm making $30,000 a year, I need to be covered for $300,000. If I'm making $100,000 a year, I need to be covered for a million dollars. I know you guys are like, man, that sounds like a lot. Well, here's what happened. Again, my youngest is 10 years old. Let's just say that I'm only covered for 100,000 and I'm making 100,000. That's one year my salary for my wife and kids. Okay, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Right, if you ask the missus, right, she'll argue that it's a horrible thing. All right, my kids may want to go to college, etc. I have to make sure that my wife is able to maintain and take care of those things. M is for mortgage, right, which is just the remaining balance on your home and or if Right now, you don't own a home, but you plan to own one soon, okay? Or eventually, or in the future, right? You want to factor that in. 
All right, and then finally we have E, which is for education slash final expenses, right? If your family is like mine, three kids, right? You want to make sure that you have enough, you know, set aside for your children to be able to go to college in the event that they decide to, right? And then you have final expenses, which could be anywhere from, I don't know, let's just say eight to $15,000, depending on how you want to put your loved one away. You have to make sure that you're able to cover all of that. So take this, take this concept here, right? And I want you guys to just kind of jot down what those expenses look like for you. And I want you to kind of match it up to whatever you have right now, right? In terms of life insurance. And if it doesn't measure up, give me a call. If you have any, you know, any questions at all, give me a call. I can be reached at 305-209-2886. Man, I hope you guys have gotten some out of this today. We're going to be doing more of these videos because we want to make sure that our community is motivated, financially independent, victorious entrepreneurs. Hey guys, look, man, I love y'all, right? If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below, right? We'll definitely get in, get at you. And please don't hesitate to inbox me at any time or text me, 305-209-2886. I'm out of here, guys. Thank you so much.